Because future-looking statements are inherently subject to risk and uncertainty, our reminder is that you should make any purchasing decisions or investment decisions based on products that are currently commercially available. Today, more than ever, you need the ability to rapidly build business solutions on Salesforce, and automation can help you do more with less. Flow is Salesforce's powerful automation solution, and today, I want to share some recent innovations to Flow. Let's start with a marquee feature coming in summer 20. You can now trigger flows when a record is created or changed. You can also trigger flows based on a schedule or an incoming platform event. Let's focus in on schedule triggers. They're great for automations that you want to run regularly or frequently. When you configure a schedule trigger, you can specify a record query. And at the time the flow is triggered, the query is performed and the flow is executed for each returned record. In some use cases, flow triggers will operate 10 times faster than process builder triggers. And all of these triggers allow the conversion of some process builder processes to flow where you can take advantage of powerful features like debugging. Let's take a look at one of those conversions. I'm going to convert this process builder process using a flow. It's an installable flow, something that you can install and take advantage of. I first select the process I want to convert and it then retrieves it, modifies it, and deploys a new flow. I can refresh my flow list, open it up, and see all of my actions and decisions in the Flow Builder environment. Now, how does Flow do something that powerful? The answer is through Lightning Web Components and Apex, leveraging code written by developers in the Flow community. As you can see, though, as a Flow admin, I don't have to think about that code because it's been published in the form of flow screen components and flow actions, reusable building blocks that I can use to snap together my business solutions. Let's take a look at another powerful example of this. Flow now works great with spreadsheets. That's because of more new things that you can install into your org. In this case, Narendra Singh, Force Panda, and Adam White and Reagan Walker from CapTech, one of Salesforce's great integration partners, built actions and components to enable this next flow. You'll want to pay attention because it's not just a demo, it's a showcase of actions and components you can add to your own org. Now the flow starts with a familiar file upload component, and I can use that to select a CSV file, the typical output from a desktop spreadsheet. But then the flow uses an action to convert that spreadsheet data into Salesforce records, in this case, accounts. And it then uses a flow screen form to make it easy to assign an owner to all of these nascent accounts before putting all of that information in a new data table created by Flow MVP Eric Smith. I use that data table's point and click capabilities to filter my list and then the results get additional processing before I convert them into a new CSV for download. In particular, I'm using an action called map collection to overwrite all of the ratings setting them to cold. And I can do that without any looping. Once I'm done, I can download this new CSV using the new file download component and we're ready to move on. The final thing that this flow does is it takes a single selected action and it generates a set of next best action recommendations. Next best action adds decisioning support to your flows and your automation. Decisioning of support allows you to integrate all of the sources of insight in your organization to generate recommendations about which flows should run and what work should be done next. You can use it to empower your own activities and the activities of your fellow employees and your customers. Three big takeaways here. One, if you're an admin, focus on the growing number of task-specific actions and components that you can click together to solve business problems. Two, as a flow developer, note that three Lightning Web Components and three Apex classes were used to power this flow. 
consider the benefit of designing your own code in the form of these reusable actions and components. You empower your admins to plug, play, and customize, and that frees you up to spend more time building new tools and less time performing endless configuration tweaks to monolithic code solutions. Takeaway three, as a decision maker, reflect upon the speed that's implied here. That entire flow application took less than an hour to create. And all of those actions and components were developed from scratch in just the last several weeks. Consider making flow the underlying substrate of your application efforts, which it will allow you to spend your energy and your resources where you can generate the most value. Now you may be wondering where you can get all of these extensions. Two places, there's a new automation components repository on the Trailhead sample gallery, and you can go to unofficialsf.com, the community site specializing in flow enhancement and development. Let's talk about another exciting summer 20 enhancement that really improves admin experience. I'm gonna show you a new lookup component that you can use with your flows. Now placed in Screen Builder, it looks pretty normal. Let me draw your attention to the right side of the Screen Builder though. When I click on this component, a custom property editor appears. If you're a developer, think of a custom property editor as a way that you can provide a custom graphical user interface to the code that you write. Next example, dual list box. This installable extension supports multiple data sources. You can pump upstream flow data into dual list box or simply type in your own strings. It also supports ordering and multiple select. And the custom property editor makes all of that power easy to configure. The third screen component I want to show you is called Quick Choice. It builds OnFlow's native pick list and radio button capabilities, providing extra features like dynamic default selection, record type based filtering, and a new visual card mode. Now, in addition to these LWCs, you can also apply custom property editors to flow actions. A flow action, also known as an invocable action, is really just an Apex class that's configured to expose its inputs and its outputs to flow and other builders like Bot Builder and Strategy Builder. Here's an example. If you're familiar with Flow's out-of-the-box send email action, you may know that it's not very powerful. But the Flow community has risen to that and provided a send rich email action that you can add to your org to add attachment support, add support for rich text, and add support for classic and lightning email templates. Now this is what send rich email's property editor looked like in Spring 20. That's a little intimidating because it's automatically generated, but this is what SendRich Email's property editor looks like in summer 20. All of the power and elegance of Lightning Web Components is harnessed to deliver an elegant, easy to use user experience. Let me briefly mention some additional flow actions that provide new functionality to your flows. If you've got junction objects, you can use get lookup collection to retrieve all of the records that have a junction relationship to your target record. If you're working with related items, the new deep clone action allows you to easily and immediately clone a record with one or more of its sets of child related records. If you're working with asynchronous actions, for example, you want to be able to do a callout after a scheduled trigger fires, you can use launch flow dynamically. Basically, it allows flow one to launch flow two in a separate asynchronous transaction. You can also install the collection actions package, a collection of actions that all focus on either modifying or inspecting every member of whatever collection of records you pass to them. And this is really great for creating data processing pipelines. The collection actions package includes actions that let you sort, filter, change values on a collection, count a collection, extracting the number of records meeting a particular criteria. 
extracting strings out of a collection with built-in dedupe capability. You can generate a report, a text readout of the different records in the collection, and you can get related child records. You can join two collections together, clone a collection, insert records into a collection, extract the first record from a collection, or simply remove a record from a collection. Let's shift back to the topic of admin productivity. One of the things enabled by recent Flow engine improvements is rich support for SOQL queries. Flow has good query tools, but sometimes you need the power of SOQL. Let's look at an example. Suppose you want to create a flow that automatically deletes files associated with specified records when those files are more than a certain number of months old. In order to do this, you need to do a query on content document links and you need to use a subquery to accounts. Now I'm going to do this in flow and I do this by setting up my SOQL query in a text template and then passing it to an installable flow action called execute SOQL. This action takes any legal SOQL query and returns a collection of records suitable for further processing in Flow. So that's pretty powerful, but Flow takes it one step farther. When you install this package, you also get a graphical SOQL query builder that can be placed in any Flow screen to provide dynamic SOQL query generation in a simple point and click way. Let's turn from SOQL to searching. This installable search component built by Gravity Lab in New Zealand shows off the power of fuzzy searching. It searches not just across multiple fields, it even searches across multiple objects. Now let's move on and I want to talk about manageability and debugging. Out of the box in summer 20, flow reports and analytics. At a glance, this dashboard shows you how are your flows running, which faults are being generated, which screens are taking longest to complete by your users. And this is just the start of the investments we're making into Flow Analytics. On the debugging side, we're delivering in summer 20 true rollback mode. Running the debugger won't permanently change your records. You also can more easily select the record inputs you want to pass into your debug runs. You also get new capabilities in providing permission elevation for particular flows. You can run a flow in system context mode. Why is that interesting? It allows you to very specifically curate access to select data and let users access it through flows without giving those users read access to the entire record. Very powerful. Now I want to finish off the manageability section, show you a new tool that just hit the community. It's called Flow Auto Test, and it generates tests that test flows. I'm talking about real Apex tests, test classes you can insert into your deployment automation. Suppose you have a flow that validates that the right kind of fruit is getting ordered. Peaches, they're okay, and this flow returns true. But if you try and put through an apricot order, this flow doesn't like that and returns false. Here's the simple flow, and you can see how it does its basic validation to make that decision. So you've got this flow. Now, wouldn't it be nice if you could automatically generate test coverage for it? Well, let's do that right now. Here, I'm creating a test, and I start by setting up my test input for apricot, and then I set my test expression. Apricot goes in, I expect the result to be false. What happens next is really magical. This flow uses the power of flow actions to generate an entire Apex test class. You can see it right here. And it's deployed and we can run it and verify that Apricot gets passed in and false gets passed out. So let's suppose that months later, some well-intentioned admin in another part of the organization decides that this flow would really be great if it supported Apricots too. They don't tell you about it, but they go and they save the change and they activate the flow. What happens next? When your deployment automation runs, this test will run. The test hasn't changed and it will fail, notifying you that something's wrong because this flow that you haven't touched in months is now returning unexpected values. Now, at this point, you might be saying, all right, these public open source extensions, they're all well and good. 
but why aren't they in the official product? Well, the answer is that we've been keeping our Flow developers super busy on some really impressive features for this fall that I am now going to preview for you. For a long time, the Flow HANA has been wanting the ability to do more with screens. It is my great pleasure to do the first reveal on multi-column screens. With easy drag and drop, you can mix and match different sections on a Flow screen, creating powerful designs, and each of those sections can have up to 12 columns. Here are some examples of what you can do. Forms become more useful when you can place multiple fields on the same row. Images can go next to those form fields, helping to convey useful information. Blank columns can be used to achieve extra levels of layout precision. And you can combine this with conditional field visibility to create powerful dynamic scripting applications. That's not all. This fall, when you create those multi-column screens, you're gonna be able to do it in your brand new auto layout mode. Auto layout mode provides elegant, simplified flow creation. Your lines are drawn for you. Your connections are created for you. Everything is tuned to make flow building easier and yet more powerful than ever before. So we're pleased to be showing you some of the things you can now do with flow. We'll keep innovating. We look forward to seeing you at Dreamforce. Thank you very much. Thank you.